a great time to be in India. The rise of unicorns, companies that are valued more than a billion dollars, has marked a new growth story in the country. In fact, about 50% of Indian unicorns are related to the e-commerce boom. In spite of all this excitement, there is a certain nervousness with which all these startups go back every single night. And this concern is regarding scaling up their operations in the back end. About 64% of customers today want the same day or next day deliveries. About a million dollars is spent every single day in India in warehousing and shipping costs alone. You will be surprised that in spite of this growth that the e-commerce companies have seen, the warehouses are still run very, very traditionally. There is almost no technology that is being used apart from minor upgradations in software. And that's where we come in. I come from a company called Grey Orange, which makes high-tech robotics to automate systems in the warehouses. This is one of the mobile robots that we make in-house. It's called a butler. A butler is a mobile robot that actually moves in a warehouse and helps pick and put items in a warehouse. If an average human being is able to do about 120 items pick or put in an entire eight-hour shift, a butler can do about 500 items in an hour. That's the kind of efficiency that we are talking about. The second big beast that you see here is called a sortation system. It's a long conveyor belt. It's a material handling system which has robotic arms. The robotic arms help in sorting out the packets based on certain logic. It could be based on location, Delhi, Bombay, Pune. It could be based on weight or volume. Let me show you a video to quickly understand how these robotic systems actually automate our warehouses. The season is here. Orders are streaming in by the thousands. And your warehouse is struggling to keep up with demand. Meet the butler. The grey orange butler is an advanced goods demand order picking system. The system performs many tasks in parallel, removing bottlenecks and helping you to fulfill large orders quickly and accurately. Operators stock inventory at their stations without needing to walk to the shelves. Let the butler do the walking for you. The butler system uses algorithms to intelligently and dynamically group items on the shelves. It learns your past and current order data and rearranges storage racks so fast moving SKUs are nearer to the picking stations. Operators require minimal training and can start using the system immediately. Best of all, it works seamlessly with existing warehouse management systems. Walking space between storage shelves is now a thing of the past, which means having more use of available warehouse space. The butlers work 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. They head to charging stations automatically when power runs low. The system makes it safer for operators, allowing orders to be picked at high speed and accuracy. When orders are received, the butlers bring shelves to the pick station for the items to be picked. Multiple orders can be fulfilled at once, saving time and effort for the operators. Fulfilling large holiday orders doesn't sound as impossible now, does it? The butler. One big step forward. surprised that every single piece of hardware and software that has gone into those systems is built in India. The kind of robotic systems that you see here have automated warehouses in India. These are real pictures of e-commerce and courier logistics companies here in this country. Now, what is so complicated about building this machinery? The butlers, as you saw, they weigh about 100 kg. And the kind of racks that they lift are about 500 kg. So you can think about the kind of reliability and scalability that we are talking about and the kind of mechanical power that we have put in into these butlers. On the same note, the kind of batteries that we use for these bots to run, they are lithium ferrite phosphate batteries. Now these batteries are used by very, very few companies globally because their battery management systems are very, very complicated. They're used by Tesla, they're used by Grey Orange. A lot of times when we talk about tech startups, People can easily relate to software tech companies 
but not so much to hardware tech companies. And I want to explain a couple of reasons why hardware startups are slightly different from software startups. One, hardware is multidisciplinary. To make the kind of products that we just saw, we need mechanical engineering, we need software engineering, electrical electronics, and embedded firmware engineering as well. Finding such multidisciplinary folks is extremely difficult in any country, especially in India, where even a civil engineer would want to be a software engineer. So how we solved this problem really was to hire people for expertise in one single discipline and then train them, train them in the rest of the disciplines. That way, we were able to build cross-functional expertise within the team. The second is about product development cycles in itself. Hardware and software have very different product development cycles. A small example is prototyping. The beginning of any hardware product is prototyping. Unfortunately, in India, we don't have a lot of rapid prototyping shops or job shops wherein you could send your PCBs to be prototyped or your mechanical parts to be manufactured. We found a solution to this here. The best use of our VC money has been by actually getting the prototyping lab internal within the office. So we bought out these CNC machines, lathe machines, PCB prototyping machines, 3D printers, casting machines, everything in-house. It's a delight for all the engineers to be working on these machines, and we made sure we don't hire technicians or operators to run these machines. That way, the engineers are engaged and are motivated to do some innovation by themselves. Finally, it's about scaling up as well. It's nice to have one or two mobile robots in the office that you prototyped. But let's say you get an order to make 50 robots. If you have an order wherein you have five software users and you try to build it to 50 software users, the thing that you need internally in the company is to add more servers and a couple of more licenses. In case of a hardware company, you need to have a manufacturing plant. This was really the situation that we had faced. This Diwali, the big billion day and the e-commerce discounts that we are talking about here in India, it wouldn't have been possible for e-commerce and courier logistics companies without this automation. We work with all the top e-commerce and courier logistics companies, and they all need these machines to run their warehouses. So the way we scaled up our operations is actually by setting up an entire plant in a matter of three months. And the reason we were able to do that is because we had engineers who have been trained cross-functionally across disciplines. The best thing that we did at work is to not have designations. That way, we never put anybody in a particular box and said, this person is a mechanical engineer or a software engineer. Everybody has equal responsibility towards the product, and that's how we brought hardware and software life cycles together. In spite of all these reasons, hardware is extremely tough. And that's the reason finding hardware companies is uncommon, not just in India, but globally as well. Look at the kind of companies that have been funded by, um, on the databases like Crunchbase or AngelList you will find very, very few hardware companies. Hardware is new, especially in a country where the hardware ecosystem doesn't exist. Hardware is certainly tough because it's multidisciplinary and scaling up is extremely difficult. However, now that we have gone through this journey for the last four years, I firmly believe that hardware is just different. It takes a different lens, a different DNA to look at hardware. If a company like Grey Orange, which was born just four years ago and has scaled up to around 300 people today, has been able to make these kind of products, I think it's definitely possible to innovate the hardware ecosystem in this country. Number two, at a place where we think getting funding for hardware companies is extremely difficult, we raised $30 million in Series B recently. This is one of the highest funding that has been ever raised by a robotic startup globally. We've also been recognized as the top innovator across India. Uh, the thing that gives me most gratification, of course, is the fact that we are making a company in India, a Make in India campaign. However, our products are extremely world class. We supply our bots globally, and in fact, we are just getting entered into the Japanese market as well. We firmly believe that this is just the beginning for hardware ecosystem in India. Hardware companies can't be an exception, it has to be an example. Most importantly, a lot of disruptive innovation in the world has always been a combination of hardware and software. And hence, 
We think while we are not yet there at a place where we have an epic to talk about, all these tales certainly mark the beginning of a great hardware ecosystem in the country. Thank you.